I received from the publisher three decks of Traveler customizable card game cards. These are decks that do not come in the starter set, and I'm going to take a look at them here with you. Two of them are new ships, and one of them is the first expansion for the set. So first we'll look at the ships. The Empress M Marava Far Trader. This is known, uh, can be encountered anywhere in the Imperium. It ranges far and wide and deals with every world it finds. It's got, as do uh, the other ship deck, 81 cards, which includes the ship card, 20 adventure cards, and 60 captain's cards. There's also two inserts, which I'll show you at the end, uh, the quick play guide and a card guide. And here we have the credits. Here's the back of your ship card. I'm not sure I showed the backs of the ship cards when I did my other video on this game. They're quite lovely, in fact, and appreciate that. And here is the ship card. I'm not going to go through all of what this means. I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you're familiar enough with the game or interested enough with the game to figure that out yourself. I may point out some things along the way, but uh, what, such as, for example, this has a crew of four possibility. And it is an um, Imperial Mercantile card. During the resource phase, you can spend some resource tokens to add a resource token to your resource pool, so you can do a little bit of resource trading and management that way as a benefit with this card, and that, of course, makes thematic sense. With this deck, you just get two connections cards, and you get Aunt Crow, the bartender, here, and she's also allowing you to sort of manage your cards a little bit. I like, I like these types of cards where they provide you with some flexibility against the basic system, and in this case it's managing cards into your hand. And we have a, a desert trade station. During the procurement phase we can get rid of some gear or upgrade and then reduce the next card we get um, by the cost of the card we got rid of. So again, a little bit more management, and once again you can see here a consistent art direction style that I think is um, quite nice and a little bit humorous. And now we come into the event section. We have a data mining consultant and this is great because you're always looking for some expert skill tokens and apparently this guy is going to give them to you. Crash course with a resourceful Targeted crew, choose a skill, and uh, gain a level of that skill. That's great. So again, you can see here with this deck so far already, there is a lot of management going on, as you might expect, for a ship of this nature. You'll see also as we go through this, now, my play of this game as my play of... The majority of games and certainly everything I do for my channel is solo. So some of these cards and in particular cards from the first expansion pack are not going to have use for the solo player necessarily beyond the credit cost because they do involve piracy and combat which piracy is not in the solo game at all and combat is fairly limited. There are some duplicates as you can see so just do a little bit I'm just showing you what comes out of the box. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Here we have, we're up to the gear cards, and um, we have this fellow who's apparently amiable and is going to give a crew member some social uh, skill. That seems perhaps a bit unlikely, but, you know, there he is interacting with somebody. And again, you can see the... The art here, for the most part, is, well, all of it really follows a um, science-y, cartoony theme, I guess, for lack of a better way of explaining it, and I think works nicely. Some of it's not so great, like they might have done better on this med kit art, but most of it's pretty good. The neural gun. We get to target target a crew and suppress that target's skills. Now, that's really great, but again, for the soloist, for the most part, not a card that you're going to be able to use um, unless you do some house ruling. And I will say that's something I'm 
So again, some repeats here. Something I'm thinking about on uh, trying to loosely work on. Now we're getting to the section of the heroic action cards. And this is interesting because it can be attached to anybody. Um, and you get some different, different options there. A reliance on professionals. An opportunistic alliance here. This it looks like that fellow turning up again. So here we get a connection, for example, from our own hand without paying a cost, and then it can then gain trifling and so be added to you, added to your ship at no, um, at no cost. Psychic theft. Dance Among the Heavens, here's some, I like the way the art ranges from very interior and uh, specific, especially for example that uh, neural gun piece of art with the person who just used it to shoot somebody to this expansive um, kind of space opera-ish art. A lot of things here let you t attach things as, hint as uh, trifling, which is sort of cool. Triage, we can get a hindrance target um, off of a crew member. That's pretty handy. Nice healing card. Another way of deck management, breakthrough. D search, search your deck for a card. Set it aside, shuffle the deck, and put the chosen card on top of your deck. I like that one. Get some duplicates here. Again. These are all duplicates. Now we move on to some upgrades, a low berth module. We can add a passenger token to our research pool, resource pool, but then we lose a victory point that we have. Sensor drone controller. Uh, the tonnage, by the way, the tonnage rating on this is 200, and I don't see um, any cards that are above that. So here's one is 200, but um, I don't see anything above 200, so that may not come into play. In the games I've played so far, that has not been an issue really at all. I misunderstood the tonnage rating in the other video I did and uh, therefore thought it was an issue, but understanding it properly now, which means the maximum number of any one card, I haven't had that come to be an issue yet. We have a smuggling hold and let's see. Oh, so when we add a cargo token, we have to add a contraband counter to the card, and then the contraband counters give us some benefits. So that's a, that's a nice card that can build on itself. Tactical display. Again, this is going to be a combat card for soloist. May not be particularly useful. And we get to the repeats. There's a lot of crew that come in with this, with this deck. Lots of new crew. And many of these crew, I notice, again, combat related. And while there are some combat related contracts for the solo player, it's not or hasn't been, in my opinion and experience, a huge part of the game. So that's something that for the soloist, these cards may or may not be as useful. But well, this is a nice guy. This is interesting. Um, this fellow who looks like a creator or some such, you can, he gives you many options. So you can get rid of him for some credits. He can, you can pay credits and gain various other um, skills with him. And he also has this jack of all trades, which is very powerful, very, very powerful skill in the game. This is also an example of a great thematic card. Doesn't really happen uh, of importance so much for soloists, this initiative, but she's a veteran, and it says here that, um, first of all, she'll increase your initiative by one, which in competitive play is important, while your ship has less than two upgrades. So if you're really, if you're really running rough, she's going to give you, with her experience, the additional initiative. So that's, this is a great example of how the cards work thematically within themselves. And here we have an Imperial Knight and another Veteran. Lots of armor on him. And she looks like a healer type. And indeed, that is, <clears throat> excuse me, that is a skill she has.
Here's the Dr. Wishick card. This is referenced in the solo rules included with the starter set, though this card is not in the starter set. And now I can add that to the collection of six I need to play that solo scenario three. I don't recall the other two that are missing, but hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll have them. So some repeats. And finally, you get your 20 adventure cards. And I won't think I'm going to really show you all of these or, or really many of them because part of the fun of the game, at least for me, is at least seeing them for the first time and trying to figure them out. So I'm not going to scroll through them all for you, but here's just an example you can see of one of them that come here. And um, that is this deck. Next, we have the subsidized merchant deck. This is in subsidized commerce, a local government will agree to fund construction of a commercial starship in return for its servicing an established route. Typically, a subsidized merchant will establish a route which will attempt to guarantee profits. And here is a look at the back of that card. Again, really evocative, really evocative art, I think. Here is the ship card for this. This has a tonnage of four of 400 and it offers you a lot of resource and it has up to five crew and you can see it looks like a bigger ship. And it's uh, text here says any round in which you take damage during piracy, lose a victory point. At the end of any round in which you gain five or more victory points, replenish two. Well, that is um, that would be a great benefit if you're playing competitively. I think it would give you, again, more management opportunities for the soloist, at least at this moment. Um, probably not very much, would not really come into use that often, at least as far as my, uh, my plays are concerned. Here are the adventure cards, and I did notice... Didn't really flip through these before, but um, I noticed I got maybe this is a mistake. I got two of the same adventure card here in this box. I don't know whether that's a mistake or meant to be, but I did get two of the same card. So there's 19 individual ones in this, at least in terms of what I got. Again, I'm going to skip over showing them you for the reasons I already already said, and we will take a look at what we have. Starting again with the connection card. Here, this is an ally, a biddable official. Well, that sounds great. Whenever an opponent plays an event, add a corruption counter to this card. Add a corruption counter to this card, only usable after you played an event, and you can exhaust it or use it to remove the corruption counters and cancel an event. So that's that's a pretty great card, and again, wonderful, wonderful art that really does evoke, I think, an environment and a place. Here's a location connection, a drifting depot. Remove two depot counters, add any basic capability token to your resource pool, and uh, this is how you get, you get tokens on this, so you can manage this card as well. And here we have an organization, uh, the bonding office. There are a lot of adding counters to this card that will impact play, and I'll just let you read, you can pause and read um, what what it says there. So this is adding a level of that type of management to to the card. We've got a tech vendor, the lucky star. This gives you a little bit of a gambling option, a um, little casino play. You can basically guess what the credit value of a card is going to be. I, I never really find these things in games to be that interesting, but I'm not much of a gambler, so maybe if you were, you would. And we move on to events, anonymous insertion, resolution phase, remove from play the target transport. Um, I've already forgotten what that's called, the complication. It's pretty good. Catastrophic overbooking, that does not sound good. So again, you're going to be seeing cards here. This is a great, you can read, pause and read this yourself. This is a great little mechanic for bothering your opponent if you are playing with an opponent. For the soloist, probably not coming into play much. Uh, I think we saw this Crash Course card in the other deck. <laughs> Overextended. This is a this is a nice example of some language that could have possibly been made clearer. And I think one of the um, ways in which the game has a teeny bit of a barrier to entry. But in any case, this is going to ultimately allow you to remove a complication from a contract. So that's pretty good and really funny art. Twists and turns. This is cool. 
kind of, this is the type of gamble I might want to take because you can remove from play a complication attached to a target contract and then just take one in um, and see what you get. And we're getting into the repeats here. We saw this fellow before. An environ, Enviro Safe Vac suit. You're going to gain some armor and invulnerable to hindrances. Again, great for competitive play. Only costs one to use. We have a laser rifle, some weaponry. And here we come in with our heroic action cards. This is uh, Sabotage. Target a ship and. Um, Oh, interesting. So you can target a ship and basically exhaust all of its upgrades. So again, for the soloist, not sure how you would make use of this, but it is um, would be great in competitive play. Police raid. We're inflicting some wounds on targets and then attaching that card as a hindrance. That's great. Again, very, very thematic for what the description of the card is. Bodyguarding. Um, ditto getting concealed against wounding effects for you in competitive play through a bodyguard makes total sense and it's sort of cool. <laughs> Snickers and slanders. Got to give some credit here to the interior development of these cards. This is a social skill card and basically it's gossip. So we're targeting the captains. We're looking at their hands and choosing and discarding a card from their hand. It's really an annoyance and an irritation. Um, very good. Very good. And some repeats here. Have some upgrades here. A little more upgrades in this uh, deck than in the other one. We get some crew compartment. Uh, defensive mines. Some fuel tanks. That's good. Uh, reducing the distance on a contract. That's I like that. That can really come in handy. Um, if you've got something that's far away, it can be very, very challenging to get there and still be able to deal with it. So that's actually quite, a, I'm going to pick up that card for sure, the next deck I build. And I'll just continue to show you a few more of these cards. Again, pause the video if you want to read some of this. Don't want to go through it every single card. And I think this, getting into some repeats here, not sure about that as a repeat, and we've seen this before. And we have some crew. Oh, I guess I had a few things, a few things out of order here. Back to an event here, targeting an unsavory crew. The target's controller must either jettison the crew or gain a piracy token. Pretty good. Q ship conversion, two of the same upgrades here. This is for this uh, ship only. It requires three upgrade slots, and it's going to give us a uh, defensive capability until the end of the round. So now we get some more crew. Professor Isaacs. I've never had a professor that looked like that, but that would be pretty cool. And we'll just flip through again, pausing if you so wish. This is interesting. Copy the crew abilities of target non-human crew member until the end of the round. I don't think I have any non-human crew members. Um, maybe in the starter set there were some. I'm not sure. The alien something expansion deck, which I do not have, I guess would have some non-human crew members, but I do not have that. Invulnerable to opponent's crew abilities. This would be extremely useful if, and he's a spiritual character, that again makes thematic sense, uh, if you were playing competitively. And she is going to be a very helpful to you. If she exerts, a you, uh, your other crew will gain that ability. So this guy looks like he's uh, a freewheeling kind of, kind of guy. He's a gearhead, and he's going to help you do some management of cards and, and switch some things out as, as it looks like he would. And uh, she's a repeat. This guy's going to give us a social skill. Seems a little unlikely, but a, re a retired veteran here. And he's going to be invulnerable to wounding effects. And he is going to 
be also able to uh, inflict some wounds as it looks like he might. And we get to some repeats here. I don't know if we saw the Xenobiologist here. But, oh yeah, we did. That was the one I mentioned with the non-crew members. This is a great card if you have non-crew members and you're playing competitively. I would think this would be terrific. And I think that is it for this deck of subsidized merchant cards. And finally, we will take a look at, this is Trouble on the Mains. It is ripped a little bit when I try to undo it. It is the uh, first expansion pack, 60 cards, new options with a specific focus on piracy and combat. Although space may look tranquil from the ground, all manner of pirates and brigands prowl the routes of commerce, and captains on even the most established mains can fall prey to their extractions. So for the soloist, again, this is going to be largely not, uh, not cards that you would be using in your game. I have said, and I'll say it again, that I'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate some piracy uh, rules into my game and also perhaps uh, build um, an opponent ship in some way that is kind of lurking around the space in which I'm trying to fulfill my contracts. This is going to be just purely a house rule kind of thing, but I, I do want to do that because there are a lot of cards, not only in this expansion deck, but in the rest of the deck. There are cards that I want to use and mechanics that I want to be able to deploy somehow with my solo play. And when I do solo play and see that there's a major aspect of the main game that I'm not able to do. I don't like that. In this case, that's piracy. So I'm thinking about it and working on it and um, eventually we'll figure something out. But for the moment, I haven't figured that out. And for the moment, thus for the soloist at any rate watching this channel, I would say that most of these cards are not primarily going to be, the benefits of them are not going to be primarily apparent to how you play. However, for everybody else, this is a look inside this first expansion for the set. Once again, starting with some connections, we have some black market investors. And again, you'll see a lot of the text here and benefits of the cards refer to piracy and combat action. So um, this, again, totally thematic sense for the card and helps, I think, drive home the theme of the game. This black market, if you have been a pirate prior, you are going to get benefits from it. You're going to reduce the number of victory points you need. So this makes sense to be rewarded from the black market for doing piracy. We've got a chop shop. Same type of deal, getting a benefit for doing piracy. Repeats. Okay, well, those are repeats. Got some events here. Crackdown from the government. You're going to have to pay some credits for each piracy token you possess. Now, interestingly, this event says all captains, so if you're playing this card, you're going to be inflicting this on yourself as well as your opponent. Homesick. <clears throat> Target committed captain must travel the distance for the contract the captain is pursuing or abandon the contract. I don't know if that makes you travel the distance again or it makes one captain travel the distance for you. I guess homesick might mean you're making someone else go again. I'm not sure. That's a little unclear to me, but clearly it's going to be a headache for somebody and not you, I guess. Laying low. Lose a piracy token. For one credit, you may instead target another captain to lose a piracy token. Targeted removal, you can basically take somebody else's card. That would be annoying. Trouble on the mains. Any attacker who inflicts at least three damage during a piracy action this round gains two victory points. See, this is rough. This, uh, this deck is really going to be... Uh, it's rough. All right, so we got some bunch of duplicates, as you would expect, so that uh, two players could stick them each, uh, at least have the chance to get the same cards into their hand. Here is a really disturbing uh, gear card, I guess they're calling it, an alien pathogen. It's a hindrance. And uh, when somebody gets it, their skill is reduced. Unpleasant. 
Flak jacket. Realms of Rampage. Tear gas canister. Makes sense. It targets more than one person. Back to the alien pathogen. And the repeats. All right. Heroic actions. Aggravated assault. I feel like I've seen this one before. Maybe not. It's going to inflict some multiple, multiple wounds. Prey on the weak. It's going to reduce the um, defensive value of a target ship until the end of the round. And you could also target someone who's pursuing the same contract as you and conduct a piracy action at that point. Getting some cash. Um, you can target an upgrade and basically uh, make the controller pay that cost. So again, these are pretty aggressive cards. Sinister Reputation. The target captain gains or loses one piracy token. And the repeats. We have some upgrades. A dreaded visit, visage. For each piracy token you possess, we gain an initiative. I think that's called initiative. Hacker's Chainsaw. After successfully, successfully resolving piracy, gain a victory plus a victory for each of this type of contract attached to the defending ship. Well, that's cool. So, um, again, it's causing you to really, really interact and look closely at what your opponent is attempting to do. And the repeats. Okay. We've got some more crew. This looks like a nasty scoundrel. And here we get some alien, or at least at least one alien, not one alien, crew member. After you successfully resolve a piracy action, inflict up to two wounds divided between one or more target crew. Spiritualist. When the opponent gains piracy tokens, we can replenish one. Well, that's pretty nice. She's helping us out by um, maybe casting energy over the opponent and um, what they're doing wrong benefits you or something like that. Uh, here, this gearhead uh, and mercenary allows us to search our deck uh, for some uh, cards with maintenance or salvage and move that card to our hand. So that's helpful. Basically IT helping us out there. And these are the repeats. So there you have it. It's a look inside the two new ship decks and the first expansion for Traveler. The last thing I'm going to show you uh, come with the ship decks. These are two one-page inserts, and they will show you, it's a summary of the cards and what the cards mean. It's a little, it's great to have. It's a little bit hard to read because white font on black type is notoriously difficult to read, and that's what, that's what is here, but it's great to have the summary. This is a two-sided page with all the various cards and an indication of what everything means. And then the other thing that comes is a basically a player aid that summarizes the rules on one page and goes through all the phases of it. Again, a little challenging to read because of the white font on the dark type, but great to have in hand and probably sufficient if you know the rules and it, so you don't actually have to go through the rule book. Yes, those are my toes holding it up. And it's double sided. So these handy things come with the uh, the decks of the the crew cards, and they are so come like that. I think they're also available on the website because I've seen these before. I didn't download them because of the ink issue. Um, didn't want to ru ruin all my ink doing so, but I'm happy to have them here.